it does get a little bit more discouraging every time. But I'm also like, that just means we're getting closer to something better. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the podcast. It's Eileen. In today's episode, we talk about mental health, self-care, and living to your fullest despite battling mental health issues. Our guest today is Reese Regan. Reese Regan is a Philadelphia-based content creator who uses her platforms to bring awareness to mental health and simple living. By sharing her own experiences battling her mental health, she hopes to make others feel less alone in their struggles and to build a supportive community. Hello, Reese. Welcome to the podcast. How are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty great. I'm really excited to be on a podcast. Good. I'm excited to have you. You were actually requested by our community, just letting you know. (laughs) People requested for you to be on the podcast. Yeah, because we like to take requests like, oh, who do you want on the podcast? And then you were one of the names. So I just wanted to make sure that you know that. (laughs) That's so crazy. Oh my God. Yeah, definitely. Um, So why don't you start with telling us your story? Like, How did you get all into like self-care and spirituality and living your life? (laughs) I don't know if we want to go all the way back to the beginning, kind of how like the YouTube and my content kind of started that. I've been on YouTube since 2015 when I was 16 years old, still in high school, um, because I struggled a lot when I was like around that age is when my anxiety and depression really started. And I just felt really alone, really unheard. But I would go home every day after school, after like being sad at school and like watch YouTube videos and like watch all my favorite YouTubers. And I just felt like they gave me that kind of like social relationship and like inspiration that I didn't really have. And I'm like, well, I want to do that. I I can like do these same things. I like all these things that these other girls like. Um, And they like taught me a lot too, because again, I just was very isolated and lonely and just really in my head. So I started making my own videos at that time. It was like a completely different time and lifestyle of YouTube. Who was your favorites back then? Oh man, I mean, there were all the classic beauty YouTubers like Bethany Moda and all of them. Oh my gosh, um, yeah. Like the OG before influencer was even a term. Yeah. Um, there was like a few smaller accounts that I can't remember the names of anymore. They're like still, not, they're not doing um, content anymore. But yeah, I just felt like such like a nice connection from that. And I wanted to like contribute because I've also been a very creative person and I really enjoyed like photography and videography and stuff like that. And it just has always been easier for me, I guess, like talk to the camera than talk to people. I felt like it was more like I was like talking to myself and I can get like the thoughts and the words out of my head. And I just happened to post them on YouTube. I've never really cared if people watch it. I just like the process of creating it. So it's kind of how all this started. And I'm still doing the same exact thing (laughs) till now. No, I I can totally relate. I'm the same kind of person. Like it's easier to post, like to record yourself and post it online than to like share that version of yourself to the people in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And it's made it, it's like definitely helped um, me be able to open up more because the more I get views or the more people that come to my channel, the more I get messages from them. They're like, you're really helping me or like, thank you for talking about this. I haven't been able to put it into words. And that just makes me more confident in being able to speak out about things and speak up out about my own problems to like my actual personal group of friends and family. Yeah. I think that's the beauty of the internet that it can be that kind of outlet that helps you grow your confidence and like your ability to share who you really are. Um, but I love that. I love that you started so early because I started around, I started my YouTube channel 2014. So I also grew up watching YouTube. So, so you started making YouTube videos. Was it just for fun as a hobby? Like, was it how consistent were you? Because it's been a long time. Yeah, honestly, I've always been pretty consistent. Um, I mean, I, when I first started, I was like in high school. So I had a lot of like school content and stuff because I also was, like a really good student. So I was like, I can make school content. And that has mm-hmm. by far always been like my most popular content. I'm obviously not in school anymore. But even when I like, went to college and did that type of stuff, because I think people just one like to see other people live their lives like something as normal as they do, like going to high school. Um, and I also gave a lot of like studying content and all of that, which I was pretty proud of. I was a really good student. So like I, I could use that, but yeah, it's just kind of developed over the years to like follow with my lifestyle. So now that I'm like out of school, it's more just kind of what I do on a daily basis, how I manage my mental health. Um, I've always been just like 
one to like just kind of share my life as I'm doing because I want to show that people live normal lives. Not every single influencer is rich living in New York or LA or like wants a lot of fame or wants to be invited to events. I just like like my little quiet life and I kind of want other people to be like, oh, she does that. I can do that too, you know? Yeah. Your content is very real. Um, let's go back to the original question of like how you got into self-care and spirituality though. Cause I, you know, back in 2015, that was not a big thing. It only got bigger over the past decade. So tell me about that story. I think a lot of it just came from me reading like endless self-help books. Like I have read so many self-help books because again, I've always just kind of been alone. So I found like other resources to try to help myself with. And I was like a big self-help book girl. And all of them mentioned like meditation, exercise, like the positive affirmations. And one of my favorite self-help books is You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. And that is a lot of like almost, almost manifestation without saying manifestation and positive talk and again, those healthy habits. I've read that book like seven times. Like that is like my holy grail book. And I think that kind of just expanded me into all of these other practices that I just learned more about. I love that. So, so you're just, you started reading books and then you just got deeper and deeper. Yeah. And I've always been like an active person. I always liked going to the gym and eating healthy. So all these things just kind of started piling on top of each other until they became like my overall self-care routine. Right. Before I talk about, because I want to know what your routine is, <laughs> but before we get into that, let's talk about like your your mental health journey, like the reason why you started diving into like self-help books and trying to learn all these things. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. I feel like this could go in so many directions. <laughs> it's, it's a yeah. long one. I mean, um, I want to get real, like talk about yeah. what you're struggling with. Yeah. So again, like I said, the like anxiety part started around like 16. Um, and I was just in high school and I just felt like I was like invisible. Like it wasn't particularly anyone was being mean to me or like I was a quiet kid and I was anxious all the time. So of course I might have, have been the most approachable, but mm -hmm. I felt invisible. I felt like I was struggling with all these things that no one could see or hear. And as that progressed on, it kind of like, once you get anxious enough and you keep thinking about these things, like it just spirals you down into depression and it wasn't something I really understood. I just knew every day I was going home and crying. And I'm like, this is not what a normal person does. This is not okay. So just like I've tried a lot of different things. I like went on medication at that point. I've like tried going to a therapist and it gets better. There's like moments and months or periods where it gets better. I'm like, oh, okay, this is, this is fixed. This is good. And then it comes back again. So it's kind of just every year it like goes through that cycle where I'm getting a little better, but the intensity of the mental health issues are also getting a little bit bigger. So again, in those periods where it's like fine, I literally feel fine. I feel like the switch flips between like good and bad in my brain. Um, and then it just got really bad around college. Right before college, it was good because I'm like, yay, I'm getting out of high school. I get to go to college, make my own choices, live on my own. Um, first year of college was pretty simple, pretty good. Um, but afterwards, it just started to really get bad again. I was stressed. I was sad. Um, I had some really bad roommates that like did not help the situation and it just got worse and worse and worse. And I just felt like I was like drowning in all these problems that I like couldn't see or figure out. And it's discouraging. Yes. But I'm also like, there has to be a solution to this. Like there has to be. So I ended up taking a semester off from college because I pretty much was like, if I go in next semester, like, I don't know if I'm going to make it out because I just, I cannot handle this right now. And again, I love school. Like I've always loved school and scholastic and stuff. So it wasn't college itself. It's just what I was dealing with. Um, and then I ended up spending that semester abroad in Scotland. And for the first time in my life, like making that decision, that was the first time I like ever felt proud of myself. Like that was a new sensation. Like I felt like a warmth in my chest. I was like, wow, I actually decided to do that. I decided to take the break I need it and go do something kind of crazy. Cause I like booked the flight like a month before I went, mm -hmm. stayed with a friend, like just had my money. I was like, I'm just going because I need a break. Like I need to get yeah. away. And that was like kind of the first turning point in the journey. So I was like, okay, I'm able when to When was that? Like that how long was, ago was that trip? That was uh, like the fall to winter of 2019. Mm, okay. So a few years ago now. Yeah. Right. Um, and I was like in my, I think I just finished my second year of college, mm -hmm. but I was like, this is the first time I felt 
something good about myself in a long yeah. time. And I was like, okay, those feelings are able to exist. Like there, it's mm. not like an endless black hole. So right. that kind of really sparked me being able to like be more brave and do more things for myself because I'm like, if I can please everyone around me, like at least I won't be a burden. Like I feel like a burden to myself, but at least I won't be a burden. But I was like, I can start making my own decisions. So I tried going back to college and then COVID hit. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Like I'm realizing I don't really want to do this. And then when the COVID hit, it was weird because a lot of good things, a lot of bad things happened. Like obviously the world was like on fire and I decided I didn't want to go to school. Like that was stressful. But again, I like felt that little spark of pride. And ironically, it was a time when I like met a lot of my friends and like my friends became close because we all lived nearby and obviously we couldn't like go anywhere or do anything. So we just spent like time like isolated outside, like all sitting like in a field doing That's stuff cute. together. Yeah. Or like FaceTime. You're saying these stuff. are new friends that you met? These are like friends... I was, it was, well, my childhood friends. And then I like integrated right. it into their friend group. Cause they're like okay. a little younger than me. Yeah. Cause I was always like, how do how are people meeting during the pandemic? Yeah. Yeah. We just all right. happened. Um, they were just like the grade below me. So I knew of all of right. them, but we never like cross paths really. Yeah. But that's nice to have that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then just coming up to now, I feel like overall in like who I am as a person, I'm definitely a lot more stable and I'm just a person that struggles with this mental health issue. I'm not like a depressed, anxious person. Like it's not my identity. So even though it's it's still hard and it, you know, affects me from time to time every few months, it's like, okay, I know there's like this solid base person I can come back to and it'll be okay. Hi, my loves. I just want to take a quick break to let you know about the new Dream Life Club, our new membership program featuring monthly live events and workshops for personal growth and wellness, goals, accountability, masterminds, and community, a powerful resource for your dream life journey. The Dream Life Club is a space to connect, learn, and grow together and find more support and empowerment as you go after the life you want. If you've been searching for a positive, supportive community or a way to commit more consistently to your personal growth and healing journey, this is for you. Learn more and join now at lavendaire.com slash DLC. That's lavendaire.com slash DLC. I'm so excited to have you. I think that's a big shift. And obviously it's it's still difficult because you're going through it. But like the first step is you're not, uh, that's not your identity, you know? Like Yeah, that was really hard because I was like, Honestly, that only has like developed in the past like year or two. Cause every time before that, I'm like, this is who I am. Like, I'm just going to be depressed forever. Um, I'm just going to like, everything's just going to fall apart around me. I can't get out of the cycle. I can't do anything. And with every little like break in between, with every little like, glimpse of happiness or like little proud moment in between, I'm like, okay, those are still there. Those feelings are still there and we can access them again. Like that's kind of what <laughs> keeps me going. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, it, it's something that, I mean, I don't, I have not like experienced depression for that long as you have. I had like a little stint when I was like going through college and just graduating. So I can't really speak on your experience, but like, what would you say to, I guess your younger self or if, like, I, I know other people are struggling with the exact same thing that you're struggling with. So what would you say? Oh man, I, I've kind of thought about this a lot too, because like, when I was younger, I guess like younger was me being like 16, 17. Cause that's when it all really started. I would just want to say to her, like, yes, you're still struggling, but so many other great things have happened. Like you finally moved out and are living on your own. You have two pets of your own. Like that was always my dream. I was like, if I can move out, like I'll not be depressed anymore. Obviously it doesn't work like that, but I always wanted to like live on my own in a city. I'm living in Philadelphia where I can see the city right outside my window. I have a cat and a dog. And I'm like, thing I would tell her the most is like, you have the most amazing friend group ever. Cause that was always my problem. I just, friends did not come easily to me. Again, that was kind of a me thing. Cause I was very sad all the time, but I would just tell her like, you have the most amazing friend group ever. Like it all comes together. It is all worth it by the time you get to this age. I love that. Like things do get better and there's still so much worth living for. Right. Okay. So looking back at your journey, because it does sound like you have gotten better and better, um, what do you think were the key shifts in your like in the way that you think or or maybe like lifestyle changes that helped? Yeah, I think just really defining what I wanted, um, which is still something I kind of struggle with, but 
like even though I had the goal kind of like as every teenager does like move out on my own I was like that during like COVID time because that's when I like really started working and I was out of school so I was about to save money and I'm like I need to get out of my house we've been trapped in here for a year that was like my main goal and that's what I was able to like put my focus and my energy on and like keep thinking positively about it like every choice I made I'm like this is good because this is going to help you get out into your apartment or like surrounding myself with these great friends that I met like community wasn't something I never felt like a part of so like surrounding yourself with just people that support you and listen to you and like that's something you cannot compare to anything else and then also just doing little things on a daily basis like yes overall sometimes the big picture is really hard like you just feel maybe sometimes like you're drowning or there's just clouds over you but if you can just do like one step at a time like I know it sounds basic and like obvious but just like getting up, walking my dog. All right. What's going to make me feel happy today? I think going out and getting coffee will make me feel happy. I think journaling will help get these things out of my head. Doing some yoga, meditation, they always make me feel better no matter what. And it's just, once you do the little steps all together, it's like, okay, now I'm like at the next level where I'm feeling kind of okay right now. Maybe I'm not amazing. I'm not super happy, but like, I'm okay right now. So, and then just keep going from there. Yeah. Would you say that you, you're you try to like celebrate and cheer yourself on doing the little things more now instead of beating yourself up because that's where it gets worse, right? Exactly. That's what I always used to do. I'd be like, this is so stupid. Like, why can't I just do the normal things? Like, why do I have to try so hard to just like get up out of bed or take a shower or something? But switching my mindset um, to that. And one of the things that really like helps with my mindset was just like letting go of any expectations because the only time you can be disappointed is if you have an expectation of something. So I would just try to like wake up with a clear head, empty slate and be like, okay, everything I'm doing is adding on to the list of good things rather than like not hitting the to-do list and yeah. like feeling like I'm like taking off points. So just Love like that. doing all those little things at a time, like it's like, okay, you did that. Good. Now we move on instead of like all these things you did not do. Exactly. Like the baseline is zero. Anything you do is like a plus. <laughs> exactly. Like changing my mindset to that was, that's definitely like a really helpful thing. Like sometimes of course it gets discouraging, but when you really try to like focus on that mindset, it does help. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So let's talk about your routine. What are all the things that you do in your day or your week to take care of yourself? Okay. There, there's a lot. I feel like. Yeah. Give it all. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. Even the weird stuff that you don't always do, but you know, the most like prominent thing that is kind of like not my choice, but it is, it's like my pets, like Mm. taking care. Cause I have a cat and a dog taking care of them, like really shaped my whole day. Like I wake up and the first thing I do is go on a walk with my dog, which like gets me out of the house, makes me get dressed Mm. whatever um and then I feed them and I'm like okay time to feed myself like they really like help structure my day and give me like a lot of emotional support um but in other terms I think just having like things that I know are going to give me a like a happy feeling good result so like having my skincare routine at night I'm like once I do my skincare routine this is when I know I'm like clocked out for the night like uh, no more stress no more problems no more worrying about the day like do my skincare routine Um, I like to like plan my meals and eat and cook well. Um, I've been vegan for about seven, eight years now. And I just think cooking has always been a really big, big thing I enjoyed. So like I plan a lot of my day around what I'm going to eat and I get excited about that. I'm like, let me try new recipes, um, and try to find meals that are balanced and they're going to make me feel good. Um, Every once in a while, I will throw in like yoga meditation. I used to be much more consistent at it, but we've, we've been through a rough patch. So like I'm trying to get back into it. But when I was consistent, I was like waking up at like seven o'clock every morning, do my yoga. And you can't deny that it like makes you feel great. Like when everyone tells you to do yoga meditation, you're like, it can't be that good. It is like, it literally helps so much. Um, as well as journaling, I usually tend to journal um, most when obviously I have like a lot on my head and I just need to like instead of my brain feeling like it's going to explode, just like get it out on paper. But it's also Mm -hmm. really good to journal when you're happy too, because I do go back to my journals. I have like dozens of journals and I go back and I like to see, you know, not just all the depressing stuff, like the happy stuff too. Mm -hmm. And then just also filling my days with creative hobbies. I feel like I cannot get enough hobbies. I know. Um, I saw that you crochet. (laughs) You create so many things. And I just keep learning them because I feel like it gives me like like a new starting point to get somewhere. So yeah, I recently learned how to sew, I crochet, 
I like draw or paint sometimes. Cooking, I guess, would be the creative hobby as well. Just like anything I can like get my hands on because that's also like a nice distracting process and it has a start and finish. So like you start something and you finish with something. So yeah, there, there's a, there's so much. <laughs> no, I love it. It, was, it all sounds really good. Like everything is like, it, it fulfills you in, in a different way. Kind of like creativity, I believe is so important. I think we all need some sort of creative outlet. And like, of course I love yoga meditation journaling. <laughs> when you do yoga, is it just like at home watching videos? Like what do you do? So I started learning like the basics of it from uh, yoga with Adrian, who I feel is like the queen of yoga on YouTube. Um, and then I just like followed a lot of her videos. And then once you get like a lot of the basic moves down, most of the time now I just kind of do what I feel like, just literally go with the flow and like see what my body needs. Um, yeah. so I do get like sore a lot too, too. Like you hold a lot of stress in your body. So I'm like, okay, my shoulders are really tense today. We're going to like focus on shoulders or like, I went on a really long walk or something. We're going to stretch my legs. So really just kind of intuitively feeling what I need to do with my body. Yeah. Yeah. Like with the way that you approach self-care, is it, do you have like, like set things that you feel like you need to do every week or every day, or do you just go with what you feel? I used to be the type of person that would be like, if I write out a routine for every single minute and account for every hour of the day, this will fix my problems as long as I do everything. But that is just too much of a stressful way to live. Because again, it's like, if you miss one step, you feel like you failed everything. So I take the same approach. It's like, okay, do it one at a time. So it's like, I'm not feeling great today. What What's the one thing I can do? Okay, let's do yoga. That made me feel good. I'm going to sit here now and meditate and then just keep building them up. So even if it's one thing, I, again, try to celebrate that. I'm like, okay, you did one thing to help yourself today. That is better than doing nothing. Yeah. No, I love that. I think you have a great mindset. Okay, so next, what... And I know that you told me what your favorite book was, but do you have any other like favorite resources or books or even podcasts that have changed your life? I think just, again, a lot of the creators and stuff that I follow, like do the same things that I do. I like to only follow and watch people that inspire me and like motivate me rather than like comparing myself to them or being jealous of them, which, you know, sometimes you can't help. Like sometimes you see things that people have and you're like, oh man, I wish I had that. But trying to like avoid that and really like surrounding myself with good, positive content. Who are some of my favorites? I love yeah. one of my friends, Helena Rose Cope. I believe that's how you say her last name. She does a lot of like, like getting a healthy relationship with food type of videos and also mm. mental health stuff. This is like a lot to think on this spot. <laughs> it's okay. But there are a lot of different podcasts and stuff too. There was a lot where that had that taught me so much about my like spirituality and manifesting and all that. So my favorite is the Mindset, Magic, and Manifestation podcast hosted by Michaela J, I believe. That's how you say her name. And then the Ella Ringrose podcast, Manifestation Babe. Uh, the him and her podcast, these were really like my main resources when I was going through kind of like my spiritual journey, like the beginning of that, because they taught me everything I didn't know. I didn't really know much. Um, yeah, those, those are really great resources. Yeah. Are these things, things that your friends are also into like spirituality and, and manifesting and everything? Yeah. Some friends more than others, but all of my friends, we like share all different aspects of our personalities together, but definitely like thinking positively. And um, again, like I feel like my most spiritual point was during quarantine because there was nowhere to go, nothing to do. Um, so a lot of my friends and I would like buy crystals and we'd go outside and like do yoga together. We'd meditate together, um, like wake up early and do that. And just, that would kind of be like our little friend dates doing that type yeah. of stuff. So That's cute. yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, something me and my friends all do. Yeah. I asked that cause I feel like your, your generation is the first one that's like so open to this stuff. I feel like when mm -hmm. I was like a little bit, even in my twenties, like it wasn't something that friends do together. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you no. know, I yeah. feel like still there's a little like hesitation to it, but, um, I think it's like such a fun thing. There's so many times where we like would wake up early and do yoga together or like wake up we would wake up before the sun even rose and like drive to the beach together and like do yoga or something on the beach yeah super cute 
where do you see the future of this space, like self-care, spirituality, and the internet? I'm just curious. Whoa. Okay. Because <laughs> you've been doing this for so long and you've yeah. seen it change, right? Oh, for you've sure. You've seen it evolve. Sure. Yeah. Let's talk about I that. I feel like it kind of like, it's been like in a wave where when I started really young, it was kind of just like people putting stuff on the internet for fun and there was no judgment. There was no like necessity or pressure or expectations. And then it, the re, like the big surge happened. I feel like the Kardashian era when they started coming up now, everyone's like, Oh, I want to be famous. And people start realizing you can get paid for this. So I feel like that like really flooded the space, which again is great. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But now that it like hit that peak, I feel like it's coming back down again where we're like, okay, we're normal people. Not everyone's an influencer. Not everyone's rich. Not everyone's going to be famous. And I feel like it is starting to like slowly spread out now to be more individualized. And Mm -hmm. so more people are recognizing mental health problems where people are like open to sharing them and sharing spaces where I think it's important to like give suggestions, but not tell people how to fix themselves because obviously that's not going to work for everyone. Um, But sharing what you do personally, I know I collect like different habits and stuff from different creators. So as long as you're like open about yourself and doing what you think is best, then it's going to help someone one way or another. Maybe not everyone, but at least someone. And again, if you're like me, fill your feed with like good things, good motivating Mm -hmm. things. So you can just kind of pick from a bunch of different people. And I, I think just again, with our generation, we have seen like the past generations just like burn out and like either be miserable at their jobs or the job market, cra- uh, the job market crashing. And we're, like, we've seen it all. We've heard our parents complain about it. And we're like, well, we don't want to put up with that. So mm-hmm. like, I think our generation is like finding more ways to be supportive of each other through things. Because again, right. past generations didn't talk about mental health. Mm-hmm. That was something you talked about. Like, I know my parents just like, didn't talk about that when they were kids. But now if more people are open about it, more people become open about it. Like the more people share, the more people share. So Hopefully, you know, uh, everyone just starts living, I guess, their truth a little bit more and not having to feel ashamed or scared of hiding things that they're struggling with because every person struggles. Like, there's no way to hide from it. So might as well embrace it and try to work through it instead of like shoving it aside. Yeah, definitely. Um, It's funny because I also noticed like the rise and fall of like us caring about influencers and celebrities and people are back to like, I just want to watch real people, (laughs) you know? And I, I even think that in the future, like the future generations might not even like social media. Like they, they want it. I think people are getting more and more private. Do you see that? Like I've seen people like buying like flip phones again and like camcorders because they're like, I just want to go We're going back to the (laughs) nineties. Yeah. So like, I just want to go out and just have a way to be contacted, but I don't want like the distraction of my phone. I don't want to be on social media. Like I just want to go out and like, everything trends, everything comes back around. Mm-hmm. So like we very much could be seeing like the fall of social media. Of course, not the complete I think fall, but. So, but yeah. yeah, like it won't ever be the same again. Like we've already no. passed the peak. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I think it's good for people's mental health is like, especially for the young generation that grew up with social media, like in their face, like they, like everybody wants to try what life feels like without that. <laughs> you know, I feel like that's where Obviously, you're a bit older than me, but like where also we differentiate because the iPhone was invented and like released when I was like 12 or 13. So I wasn't like an actual child, like growing up with it. I kind of grew up with it around 15, 16, 17, which is still very young. But like kids now, like the very young Gen Z, they have phones in their hands when they're like a toddler. Like it's a very different, like I remember life before social media as well. Exactly. Like I remember my childhood without like electronics playing outside and all that. So we very much- they didn't get that, like the younger generation. Exactly. Like nostalgia Mm -hmm. comes back. Like we very much could be seeing that again. And I would not be surprised if we see that. Yeah, I totally see that happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is your latest obsession? Like what are you into lately? Or what are you learning lately? Like I mentioned, I just recently took a sewing class. So I'm trying to like alter some clothes that I thrifted. I'm not going to be making anything anytime soon. But something I am learning right now um, is cycle syncing. Have you heard of that? Like your menstrual cycle? Yes, yes. Because syncing it with with what? You sync your lifestyle and eating habits to it. Um, So my 
period has always also played like a huge factor in my depression and like mood swings and stuff because I also didn't get my period till I was like 16 or 17. So I didn't know like these mood swings that I were having Mm -hmm. were like aligned with my period until like years later. And discovering that I'm like, oh, okay, my hormones are like out of whack. So I've been really trying to find ways to balance my hormones because, you know, I I can take every medication and stuff, but I still want to like try to help myself from the inside out. So something I've been learning recently is cycle syncing is like eating certain foods that have different nutrients and vitamins during each phase of your cycle that help support or like lessen certain hormones levels. It's a lot to take in. I'm reading a book called In the Flow, which has like broken it down really easily. But yeah, just like kind of every week you just have like a different grocery list of different foods. Mm. And every week of your period, you do like different levels of activity because obviously when you're like on your period, you're low energy. You're not going to be like going to the gym, but like two weeks later, you're like at your highest energy. So that's when you like want to go to the gym, go on runs and all that because women just have like a different biological clock. We run on the monthly cycle rather than the daily cycle like men do. So that's just something I've been learning about recently and I've been really enjoying it, honestly. Yeah, no, that's super cool. I I have heard of something like that. Um, So have you started implementing anything? Yeah, I've been doing it, I think, for about like two months now. Um, And the most thing I focus on is the food because I like eat everything at home. I cook everything at home. So one, I've been liking it because it like literally gives me a grocery list. I'm like, cool. I don't have to think about my grocery list. It's been helping me like think of new recipes and stuff. Um, But I just feel like so much like lighter in my body. Like I just don't feel bloated or like inflamed. And I have already eaten very healthy. I've been vegan again for years and years, but I think just the way that you're aligning it with your hormones, nothing's like fighting against each other in your body. Right. Um, And it does prioritize like a lot of like, obviously whole foods, fruits and vegetables. So that's always gonna make you feel better. Mm -hmm. But even as someone that ate that way before, I have felt a difference just in the pattern of when I'm eating things. Like, what is it about the types of food? Like, give me an example. Like, what do you eat when you're like low energy or high energy or? Yeah. So it's the certain like nutrients and vitamins in them either like support estrogen production or support like testosterone. So obviously your hormones fluctuate throughout the month and then the different things that you eat will like prevent you from like getting too much estrogen where it's going to make you feel crappy and bloated and stuff like that. I have like a little note. Let me, let me pull it up so I can give a specific example. No, though, that's really cool. Cause I I've learned about like syncing your cycle with, I mean, it's kind of, I've learned about like the moon cycle and like our period cycle is not so different where you have times where you're like supposed to have energy to go after things. And then times where you're supposed to rest and rejuvenate. Um, but I think just in general, like it's a lesson for women that you don't have to be like 100% all the time. Like we have our good days and our bad days, our high energy days and our low energy days. Exactly. And that's been something I've been really trying to like learn and implement because we live in a society like made for men. And then we're made to feel terrible when we cannot fit into it when biologically and physically, like a lot of the times we can't. Um, And it just, I also feel like it's just kind of like a power move to like live on your own, embody your womanhood and just like... Yes, do do what does best for you rather than like trying to fit the mold of the world. But an example of like eating, so like on like your actual menstrual cycle, like your period, like eating like warm and comforting foods because obviously you're cramping, you're bloated, and you want everything to be warm and you know comfort you from the inside out. And then once you get like two weeks ahead, which is like the opposite end of your cycle where you have more energy and more life, you're like eating raw fruits and vegetables, smoothies. Uh, light, fresh type of food. So lining it up with that. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, Okay. I know that you use like crystals and stuff. So like, tell us about your routine with that. Like, how did you learn? Cause, cause that can go pretty deep, <laughs> you know, like what goes where, what does what? So how do you use crystals? Using the resources, like the different podcasts and just like searching up specific things. Um, really like taught me a lot about that but funnily enough my papa he like collects crystals he actually goes out and digs them himself this man has like hundreds and hundreds of crystals in his house um so like I originally got crystals from him because he would like mine them and dig them up and he just like hands them out like little presents to everyone like every time I saw him so that's what really like first got it in my hands and 
it's me starting to learn about it. And I feel like you can interpret it different ways. Like obviously there's certain colors of the crystals that have different meanings and specific crystals that have specific meanings. But I think just like finding one and like if you feel attracted to it, if you're like vibing with it, even if you just like the color, like that's what's going to matter most, like how your energy reacts to it. So um, what I typically do is just when I'm about to like go meditate or do yoga, I literally just sit in front of my little shelf of crystals. I'm like, which one is calling to me today? And I just pick them up. And if I like observe them later and it's like, oh, say there were blue crystals and blue is like the color of your throat chakra. I'm like, oh, have been, I've been like holding something in. Have I not been saying something? Have I like been holding back my voice? Um, and then like red crystals are like your root chakra where um, it's like the, the root of everything, like the base mm-hmm. of who you are, your emotions and stuff. So if I pick up a red crystal, I'm like, okay, I just really need to balance myself and like really get down to the root problem of something again I'm I'm no expert on this obviously this comes from like years of different traditions and religions but just trying to associate myself with like these natural elements I feel like really just you feel the energy in them like personally I feel like I feel the energy in them especially when you're like trying to pick it out all I tell my friends I'm like just find one that you vibe with and that's good it's more about the intention you put into the crystal Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like you're super intuitive and you don't have to be an expert. Like you're, you're being guided. (laughs) And I, I I feel like that's all of our, the younger generation is like, we're just like learning bits and pieces from everywhere. And then we just mix it into our own, like we put it together ourselves into what works for us. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like our generation has a lot less of a cookie cutter type lifestyle, you know? And that's again, kind of that whole thing where everything like everyone has um but it's like yeah there's no like one right way or one exact way to do something or to live your life where people are like more accepting of everyone's like differences and like ability to live their life and not stick to the status quo definitely okay what is one thing that you're looking forward to like what do you hope to do with your platform and what you have now I don't know the thing is I never really this is like, I'm not trying to be like humble or anything. Like I really don't ever think about like my channel as like a channel in a business sense. I'm just like, I just make videos and post them and just like nice people comment on them. I'm never really viewing it from like a business sense, like how I can grow it, what I can do, what will make me more money, what brands I want to work with. Like, yes, those are all things I consider, but it's never like the forefront of my mind, um, which is, What's the is forefront? Bad, <laughs> it's bad business, but the right. forefront is always just like being honest and like being mm-hmm. vulnerable because every time when I was younger that someone was like honest and vulnerable online, it made me feel less alone mm-hmm. because again, I felt like no one could understand what I was going through. I felt so alone and lost and had, because like even if I talked to my mom or my doctors, like they weren't getting it specifically. So the people that would say things I would, I would feel that like connection to them. And that's kind of what I want to be for other people. Cause I know how horrible it feels to feel like you're dealing with something alone. So I'm like, if I have to be the person that just shares every single thing about her life online, like go, let's, let's do it. So be it. I think that's so like, it's so beautiful that you have that. It's your purpose, you know, like you're, you're, you're giving something to people, making them feel less alone. And I just had this realization, like, is it because we had social media and people were sharing their mental health and issues and being honest online that like our generation and the young people are less like, that's why we're so open about it. Cause like we feel less alone. Cause think about it before social media, everyone was going through depression and these issues in like isolation. Exactly. Right? Like, and it's usually just the same people that are around you and that's it. You, there was exactly. no way to really like expand. And you feel so misunderstood. Exactly. Right? And you're probably not going to talk about it because these people, like this small group of people that are with you all the time, you don't want to like expose your secrets mm-hmm. or your darkness or something. Like you want to still feel accepted and not push mm-hmm. away the small group of people that is only available to you. Yeah. Yeah. So because of social media, people definitely feel less alone and we can talk about these things that are like in the shadows. Exactly. And I think just acknowledging your problems or your struggles is like one of the biggest things, because again, like I tried to deny it for so long and that's not helping anyone just like pushing it down. It's just going to be like a bigger explosion at the end of the day. So talking it through, 
letting go of like the shame or embarrassment because again once people you see more people post about it you're like there's more people dealing with this it's not just me there's nothing to be like ashamed about it sucks it's a struggle but it's something that happens right right um so with your channel what do you do when you don't feel like posting do you just not post or do you like I don't know what I guess what are you thinking because every creator struggles with it especially if you've been doing it for so long That's kind of why I don't look at my channel as like a business platform because if I think about that too much, it's like, oh my gosh, I have to post. It's just going to be so stressful. And by this point, like a lot of my followers and subscribers like know that like if I haven't posted in like two, three weeks, I'm probably going through it. And people are very supportive of that. Um, It's just like at that point, if I'm like hitting another depressive episode or something, it's like I just need to take care of myself right now as much as I would love to post, as much as I like yearn to. And I, I just, I love creating content. It's just not something I can do right now. And I just kind of, again, it's something that sucks, but it has to happen. I just need to take a break until I'm feeling okay again. And then how do you decide like what you want to talk about in your videos? Or do you just kind of like just vlog your life? Yeah, I just, I just vlog. I used to do again, more like structured videos where it was like, how to do this or how to study or just like topic type videos. But then again, I feel like people got to the more casual vlogs where people weren't doing that more because we just want to see other people live their lives, you know, see how they relate to us. So most of the time I'm just like, I wake up and turn on my camera. I'm like, we're, we're going throughout the day. Let's see what we're doing together. I don't even know what I'm doing half of the time, um, but we'll just figure it out together on camera. <laughs> Yeah, that's so it is really real. Like you're not really planning it. You're just filming. You're you're just documenting life. Okay, so what what inspires you right now? What inspires me is every time I do come out of a depressive episode because I did just have like a recently like a pretty bad one. It it like I come out of them every time. So I'm like, okay, it does end. Yes, it might come back, but it does and eventually, and I get these moments of happiness or courage or whatever the case may be. And I think that is what honestly keeps me going. So I'm like, it's going to end. It might be a rough ride getting there, but it's worth it for those good moments in between. And Mm. I, and it's kind of like, I feel like a lot of the time I'm like living out of spite because I'm like, you're not taking this from me. You're not taking these happy moments from me. You're not taking the people I love and my pets um, from me. And like, there's a bigger reason for all this. And so far, my bigger reason is sharing it and making people feel less alone. So I think that's just what kind of gets me through it every time. It's like, it does get better. Yes, it may get worse, but the better parts are there. Yeah. It's literally like you're going through a battle, like you're fighting, literally fighting. And you're each time you come out the other end, but it's still a battle. It's still a battle. And there's no denying that it's terrible. Like I wish I wasn't experiencing this, but unfortunately it is something I'm experiencing and I'm trying to fight it. I'm doing everything I can to try to fix it, but it's also something that might not ever be fixed. So instead of suppressing it and pretending it doesn't exist, let's just live with it and make the most of it that we can. Yeah. Just write it. I mean, each time you come out of like a depressive episode, do you feel stronger? Cause it's, you know, it's like you're, I would imagine you get stronger and stronger each time, but do you feel like that? It depends. I feel like overall, like I said earlier, like myself as a person gets stronger. Like I become more resilient, but it also, I feel like every time it does happen, it does pick away at me a bit more because it's like, how many more times am I going to go through this? Like, I was so tired the last depressive episode. It's like, do I really have to go through this again? So it, it has its ups and downs because it does get a little bit more discouraging every time. But I'm also like, that just means we're getting closer to something better. I don't know if that's going to be a fix. I don't know if it's going to be a cure. But something better is going to come because, again, I'm like, spiteful like this is not happening for no reason at all like uh, I'm not letting you take me (laughs) yeah we're we're getting through this and there's going to be something that comes out of it because no one struggles for no reason like there's got to be something yeah yeah 
it's like you have that like really strong warrior side <laughs> that's fighting this thing. And it's, it's like a back and forth where it, it is super difficult, but I mean, I think you're getting stronger. <laughs> sometimes you get really tired and burnt out and you just like, sometimes I'll just lay in bed for days or weeks because I'm just so mentally exhausted. Like, it's funny because you see nothing, but like the battle is completely in my head. Um, and like, yeah, sometimes I feel like, like I like give up a little bit, but I'm just like, I know, like if I, if I need this rest right now, it's because I need it to move forward. If I need to mm-hmm. just like, stop everything that's okay. Like that's what my body needs right now. That's something that I've been trying to learn to do. It's just like, instead of beating myself up for everything, being lazy, like not going out, not doing all these things. It's like my body's telling me that it needs this. It needs to rest. It needs to just like stay in its little cocoon of its apartment and just wait it out until we're able to like integrate back into life again. Yeah. I love that you have, I mean, I think you have to be super gentle with yourself, but that's a lesson to everybody. Cause I know a lot of people still are in that, like, oh, I have to go, I have to be productive. I have to do this, but it's like, no, you can rest. You can let yourself rest as much as your body needs to. And it might be like a long time, but, but you have to do what your body needs. Exactly. Exactly. That's been, it's something hard to come to terms with. Cause I've always been a very like type a perfectionist go, go, go type of person. Like, again, when I was like in my teens, I was like, how can I be a business owner? How can I do every single thing at once? And like, how can I graduate college early? It's like, that doesn't work when I don't have like my gas tank all the way full. Like that just doesn't work. So you need to like work with what you got and go from there. What is one thing that you want to share with our audience? Like if you have one message you want to share with the world and put it out there, what would it be? I think kind of just what we were discussing. It's just like, there is going to be something good that comes out of this. We are not put through struggles or battles for nothing. Um, And even if you have to make that good thing for yourself, like if you're tired of waiting, if you have to make it, And yeah, maybe the sadness or the bad things, they come back, but you just have to really hold on to those good moments because they're, they're just as important. Like I know it gets debilitating or sometimes you get blinded by the depression or anxiety, but doing the most to make the most of the time where you are feeling good, I think is what gets me through. Um, So yeah, just really holding on to those good moments and knowing that like more are to come because we don't struggle for nothing. We're either learning something or our body is making us rest or we're learning something to teach to other people. That's just always kind of been my mindset on that. I love that. All right, Reese, where can we find you online? Okay, you can go to my YouTube, which is basically Reese, or you can just look up my name, Reese Regan. And then my Instagram is also basically Reese. And I believe my TikTok name is Reese period Regan. Someone stole basically Reese from me. I couldn't oh no. get it. Yeah, someone stole it before I could get it. Um, oh. But yeah, mostly if you just look yeah. at my name, Reese Regan, or basically Reese, that's where you can find me. Amazing. Okay, everyone, definitely follow Reese on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, everywhere. Thank you so much for sharing. Like, thank you for being honest and real. And also, like, what you do on your YouTube, just being so authentic and sharing what you're going through is helping so many people. So, thank thank you you so much for having me. This was such a great conversation. 